Amen. Well, praise the Lord. We're going to uh, do a message entitled, I changed the title from what I originally had it because of the season. So this was a devotion I wrote some time ago, and I entitled it, God is not, God is not a genie. But I'm changing it because the, scene, the, the season, and we're going to title it, God is not like Santa Claus. Now, some of you might really love Santa Claus, and this is not no Santa Claus bashing message, Harry. <laughs> I love Santa, but we're not going to talk about Santa. We're going to talk a message entitled, God is not like Santa Claus. What do I mean? Well, let's get into the word. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1 through 6. It says, as you enter the house of God, keep your ears open and your mouth shut. It is evil to make mindless offerings to God. Don't make rash promises and don't be hasty in bringing matters before God. After all, God is in heaven and you are here on earth. So let your words be few. Too much activity gives you restless dreams. Too many words makes you a fool. When you make a promise to God, don't delay in following through, for God takes no pleasure in fools. Keep all the promises you make to him. It probably should say if it's best to not make any promises at all if you're not going to follow through with it. And it's better to say nothing than to make a promise and not keep it. There it is. Don't let your mouth make you sin. And don't defend how can your mouth make you sin when you make promises and not, don't follow through with it. You say you're going to do this and you're going to do that unto God and you don't do it. That's sin. And don't defend yourself by telling the temple messenger that the promise you made was a mistake. That would make God angry and he might wipe out everything you've achieved. That's pretty intense there. Talk is cheap like daydreams and other useless activities. Fear God instead. Amen. So what are we saying here? We're saying here that God doesn't want our wish list. So what we're talking about really is how to approach God. We don't approach God like we would Santa for the kids out there. Santa, what do we do this time of year? We put out a wish list and hopefully it gets to the North Pole and hopefully he gives us under our Christmas tree all the things we wished for. Some people treat God the same way. They just throw up prayers and hopefully they'll come back down as answers. When we approach God with our wish list, we're treating him like Santa Claus. It says in these verses that this is actually evil. She said that. See, we're called by God to do his will, not for him to give us the things we want to do our will. Romans 12, 2 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. So we shouldn't be doing things like the way the world does it. The world wishes that there was a Santa Claus or hopes that there's a God. We know that there's a God. And we have not just a hope that he'll hear our prayers, we have a relationship with God. It's a connection. We actually communicate together. So it's not just throwing things up at him, hoping that he'll hear us. It's communicating together, listening and hearing and receiving and then doing. See, it's, it's then you will learn to know God's will for you. How do we know God's will? As we're continuing to be transformed, as we get to know God more, we understand what he's about. We understand who he is. And the more we do that, the more we understand his will. And then prayer becomes easy. Because it's not trying to figure God out. It's like we're getting to know who God is. And so we're just praying what we know he wants. And that's a lot different. So prayer is not about getting God to do what we want him to do. It's about releasing God's will on earth as it is in heaven. Let me say that again. Prayer is not about getting God to do what we want him to do. It's about releasing God's will on earth as it is in heaven. That comes from Matthew 6.10. See, Jesus, he had the right kind of relationship with God that we are supposed to follow. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. 
That's what we're here. We're not here about for ourselves anymore. We gave our life to the Lord. Our life is in his hands. It's not about us. It's all about him. So what does he want? Not what we want. Big difference from a Santa Claus God to the real God. Jesus is saying in John 5, 19, I tell you the truth. The son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing. So therefore, we don't really ask whatever we want. We hear, receive, and then as it says in Job 22, what is it, 28, you decree it. It's not so much praying. The Bible says, like, when a king decrees a thing, it shall be established. Jesus is the king. But where is Jesus? In us. We're partnering with the king of kings for the purpose of his kingdom. So what we really got to do as, his, as the king's servants is simply, king, what do you want? And then speak it forth. That's prayer. That's prayer with power. That's prayer that brings results. That's prayer that you don't just wait for stuff under a Christmas tree once a year. You know, Santa Claus... If there's only a Santa, if you don't have God in your life and all you believe is in Santa, it doesn't give you much. You got one day of the year to get things. You know, when you got God in your life and you know him personally, you realize he's with you every day. And you get his blessing on your life every single day. See, we did not choose God. He chose us. And he appointed us so that we would bear fruit and so that whatever we ask in his name, the Father will give us. It's that simple. It's we, Since he called us, he will tell us what to do because he appointed us. We didn't appoint ourselves. We didn't take that position. You know, truly, people in government are supposed to be public servants. They're really not supposed to be in position for them to serve themselves, for them to be able to now get to do what they want to do. Their purpose really is to represent the people that elected them, and then they're supposed to give the people what they want. That will determine if, you, if they're going to get reelected. If the people got what, they, what the person promised them, and he promised you to do the things that they want. So, the way we should approach God is not like Santa on the lap. When a child comes and sits on Santa's lap, what does the child do? It just starts, Harry, what do, the, how, what do the children do? They start telling you all that they want. Have you ever had a child just tell you one thing after another? It's like a long, long list. It's like, really, how can, do you really think Santa can get you all that? The way we should approach God is with listening ears, not blabbing mouths. Blabbing away to God. Hoping that one of the things that we said will come to pass. Who are we to think we know what is best? Really, who are we to think that? How far, has, how far have we gotten it in life without God? God in heaven knows and sees all. We should therefore wait to hear from him and then just declare what he reveals. Sometimes prayer can be so difficult. We just don't know what to pray right. We don't know if we're praying right. We don't know what to pray. If we would just take the heart just to simply quiet ourselves and listen, God will honor that. God is, wants people to pray. His will can't really be done. He chose to use people. He gave the earth to man. And so a big part of what his will being done on earth depends on man. He's sovereign. He doesn't have to do it that way, but he's chosen to. And so he's waiting for us to come to him each day and say, Lord, what do you want me to speak today? What do you want me to decree? What do you want me to do today? If we would live that kind of way, we would really be advancing his kingdom. We would really be transforming the world. We would really make a difference. But I believe a lot of us pray religiously. We pray the, the Santa way, just babbling and hoping that 
something will happen with what we said. Man, my phone already went dead. Jeez. So now that we've heard from God and we've decreed it, what should be our response? See, with Santa, you don't really have to do anything. You just give him the list and hope it's under the tree. But with God, it's completely different. God, he doesn't want us just to hear. He wants us to do. Just do it. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. In Ephesians 6, 5 through 9, it says bond servants. That's what we're called to be, bond servants in his kingdom. Obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart, as you would, would Christ. Not by the way of eye service as people pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ. And when we live just to please people, we get burdened with so much. This time of year is a big people-pleasing time of the year. This is like the people-pleasing time of the year. If you're a people-pleaser, this is when you're the most burdened ever is during Christmas because you have to make sure everybody that expects a gift gets their gift. Hello? <laughs> it's not a fun time. If you're a God-pleaser... Your focus is on Christ through every season in life, including Christmas. And so that doesn't become such a heavy burden. So if we're more of a God bond servant of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, then we're rendering service with a, with a good will as to the Lord and not to man. Knowing that whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord. Whether he's a bond servant or is free, we reap what we sow. We sow what we reap. Masters, do the same to them and stop your threatening, knowing that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and that there is no partiality with him. And I love this verse here. He that keeps, he that hath my commandments, that means we've heard, because it first takes that. How do I know if I'm in the will of God? First, I've heard his will for my life. I've heard his instructions for this day. And then I'm not just heard, it says, and then I've, I've I, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them. That means I do them. It is he that loveth them, loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved by my Father. And this is the cool thing. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. To live in the manifest presence of God. Sometimes people experience that in a church setting around Christians, but then it usually that's the only time they, they experience it. But it says here, how do we experience the manifest presence of God in everyday life? It's when we take this scripture and live it out. It means it's not just a Sunday morning, Wednesday night experience. Every day, I'm, Lord, what are you telling me? What do you want me to do? What's the instructions today? My king, my father. Oh, okay. And then we do it. <sighs> He's there. Because with God, it's not about doing things for him. I think I put that there. We're not... Pro we're not to promise what we'll do for God, but rather we are to work with God to do his will. When we're working with God, we have his manifest presence. When you have his manifest presence, everything changes. Every situation changes. Every person around you begins to change because God is now working through you. Not just working for him. You are now working through him and with him. Amen? So that should be our response to God. So a little saying that came to me was, what good is it to be busy doing something that will not last into eternity? So what good is it to be busy doing something that really will not last into eternity? God's word says that his word lasts forever. The one thing that will remain for eternity is his word. So everything we do, led by his word, through his spirit, will leave, leave an eternal effect, will have an eternal effect. So the best thing we can do in our life every day, if we want our life to be exciting and meaningful and purposeful and making a difference, all we got to do is open up our ears and hear. And then what we hear we release and we walk it out. So my charge for each of us tonight, first is to stop praying to God in heaven and start hearing from God in heaven and decreeing his will on earth. So stop throwing your prayers up. 
here and throw your prayers out. Here and throw your prayers out. That's the best way to pray. Speak less, speak less, listen more. That's in regarding prayer. Speak less and listen more. Make up your mind that I will follow through with what God has told me. I will not just be a hearer, but I will be a doer. Let's start this tonight. As God reveals, this is what I'm going to ask. As the team comes back and finishes a couple songs, you guys got a couple more songs? Okay, yes, cool. To finish a couple more songs at about five till, I want you guys to come up here and pray what God revealed to you. You're not going to pray up. You're going to pray out. You're going to release his will in the earth. I'm not going to close in prayer. It's up to you guys. So I like at least, that means you don't babble on and on and on a prayer. It means you just pray what you heard, and that's it. Enough said. Amen. Got it? Awesome.